the DS family is the best selling handheld of all time, and just barely second to the PS2 out of every console. Yet there are barely any hardware mods for these guys, besides, you know, taking off one of the screens. However, the DS has a mod that most consoles don't, a capture card. Made by 3DScapture.com, this is a $70 mod that allows you to output both screens to your computer. And guessing by the software, this thing has been around for a long time. But it does output via USB-C and it also charges at the same time. So it's also a USB-C charging mod, which is great, don't get me wrong. But why don't we just remove the charge port and move the board over there? That way I didn't have to spend 30 minutes carving out a hole that ultimately ended up looking like this. Also, I really wish this was for the DS Lite. It's just the better DS model with way better screens. Thankfully, the original DS does have a GBA slot and this mod is significantly cheaper than the 3DS version. So this is a great budget option for capturing DS games. And while this is budget friendly, it's not quite beginner friendly. I'd say this is an intermediate level soldering job. Even I've had a hard time recently with a similar soldering job, but since then I've learned from my mistakes. This mod went very smoothly, other than the trimming, and I'm ready to teach you how to do it. We're gonna start by taking off the battery cover, and in classic DS fashion, there is a Phillips screw here, but the rest of the stuff we're gonna be working with is the tri-wing. But then we'll go back to Phillips on the inside, don't worry. Technically, it's JS not Phillips head. It's a cross head. It doesn't matter. There. Are you happy? There's always someone that's going to correct me. And it's uh, actually, it's not a Phillips head. I use a Phillips head and it works. <laughs> now we can switch to our tri-wing and then from there you can just lift it up and then there's one, two, three, and four Phillips heads. Once those are all out, we can flip up this and pull this ribbon cable out. Then we can lift these tabs up by pulling them back and then we can pull those ribbon cables out then we can lift this tab up and we can pull this ribbon cable back and then we can pull this antenna out then we should be able to lift up on the motherboard by the cart slots very carefully pull that motherboard all the way out and we can pretty much just leave this part alone. I'm gonna set that off to the side for now. We don't have to mess with it any further. All we're messing with today is the motherboard and the back half of the shell. Before we get to the motherboard, let's actually tackle this part. We're gonna have to unscrew this. It looks like we're attached by the shielding here. I did not know that. So you take that off real quick because we don't need this. So I'm gonna cut these screw posts out here. Our objective is to cut a hole for the USB-C through this hole here. I'm just gonna flush cut these out. Be very careful. This will probably bend if you try and flush cut these off, but I'm just gonna cut it from kind of all sides here. And I should warn that the DS, the original DS shell is probably the most fragile Nintendo shell you'll ever work on. Be very careful, be very patient and just keep cutting a bunch of uh, different angles. Apparently sometimes you just gotta get in there with your fingers. That area seems mostly flush. So now what I'm gonna do, I have a couple of old, somewhat rusty files. This took way too long and I'm honestly frustrated. There's a few things I wanna go over. You're gonna wanna cut down about halfway on the shorter end of this L piece and make it all flush. You are gonna wanna make this area pretty thin because the edge of the board is gonna go right here. It needs to fit in like this. And to get this bottom piece all the way up against here, you're gonna have to make the USB-C port get as close to the outside as possible. So after a while, I just had enough and I just cut that whole section out. There's gonna be a bit of a gap. I don't really care. If you wanna try for the perfect USB-C cutout, go for it. Now, let's move on to the soldering part, which that was an annoying part. I think this is a harder part. I highly recommend Flux for this. And I also recommend a way to clean your soldering iron, whether it's a sponge or one of these things. And I'm gonna go ahead and put down some Flux on these two points and then on these two points. Because the first thing we're gonna do is tack this down on the two farthest points. I also recommend taping it down, preferably capped on tape, but if you don't have that, really any tape will do. This is just gonna be a temporary taping because we wanna line all of these up as best we can. With this lined up, I'm gonna tack that down and go over here. I realized I'm not zoomed in for this, I apologize. I'm just holding my iron down for a little bit, making sure that solder that's already there is flowing. I'm going to make sure I can flow that solder, that existing solder, onto all of those points, because that's where I struggle. It's no problem to just add solder to all these points. 
but it's getting the solder that's underneath it, those points underneath it to connect to the solder that you're connecting to the ribbon cable. I hope that makes sense. And I'm just gonna go over all these other points with extra solder, still holding it there for like an extra second or two to make sure that it's reflowing the old solder and the new solder and connecting it together. And there's two extra holes on this part of the ribbon cable that don't have any gold around them, so there's no need to solder them. So we're gonna have to flip this cable over like this, and then we're gonna be connecting it to these two points here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to zoom in on this one, unfortunately, and then just solder it back down, just like you did the other ones. This one will probably be a lot easier if you hold it down with tape. The hardest part was not getting my arm in the way of the camera. <laughs> that is all the soldering we need to do. And I'm actually going to give it just a little crease, not too hard, just a little crease. I'm gonna clean up all of this flux and use my 99% isopropyl alcohol. In fact, if you haven't cleaned your board, it's probably not a bad idea. Don't spray directly over the buttons because the liquid will seep in there and your buttons won't work. And before we move on, I would just recommend looking to see if all of your solder points look like this. Nice round balls of solder. That's typically the sign of a good solder job and it's really easy to achieve with flux. Now we can take our front half back. From here on out, it is honestly pretty simple. We're gonna stick all three of these ribbon cables through this hole here. I recommend getting the fat one in first because it's a lot longer. Make sure you get the top screen's ribbon cable out and make sure that our new ribbon cable is sticking out too. And then you should be able to finagle your board back down into place. And then we can just plug all those ribbon cables back in and lock them down. Smaller ribbon cables are gonna be a little tough, but make sure those tabs are all the way open to put those ribbon cables back in. And then make sure you close them once they're in. And the last big guy, there. And then we have one more ribbon cable left sticking out. That's for our capture card. Oh, shoot, don't forget your, uh, your antenna. I always struggle with these, so just take your time. And of course I get that one first try. <laughs> then you can take our new board and we can line this piece up all the way against this. Leave that little bit of gap there, but the furthest point that sticks out can be all the way up against this. Then line up this side of the new board with that bio slash Wi-Fi chip here. And that is where this comes into play. You can peel your double-sided tape. We can line that up and stick it down. Then make sure this flap is up. It's a little tight in here. If you want to, you can remove the R button, but stick that in, make sure that ribbon cable all the way down, and then lock it down. Then we can go ahead and put those four Phillips screws back down, securing the motherboard. Then going back to the back half, I'm just gonna secure the shielding down. I'm not gonna worry about this stylus holder because my stylus is already gone. And then we can go ahead and put the back half back on. And it's not perfect, but it's good enough for me. Keep in mind that this is now covered up, so we aren't gonna put a screw there, but otherwise you can just go ahead and put all of those tri-wing screws back where you found them. So we're actually gonna end up with an extra Phillips screw and an extra tri-wing screw. Then you can put your battery back in, and I guess we probably should have tested to make sure everything's working before we screwed everything down, but whatever. Then we can flip this over and turn it on, and... Everything still works, except for my bottom screen. I'll be right back. The big fat cable wasn't in all the way. It's probably gonna happen because there's five ribbon cables you have to plug in for all this. So just make sure all the cables are fully in before you close this thing up. So you're gonna wanna go to 3dscapture.com. The link will be in the description. If you're on Windows 7 or older for some reason, you're gonna need to install a driver. Everybody else is going to just click on software and start downloading the zip file. Unzip it and run the exe file. Then once you open it up, it should look something like this. Both screens will probably be in one for you. And I would completely ignore this. Most of the video codecs don't even play the video. To get audio, I plugged the aux to the line in port on my PC. You just have to pretend it's a microphone to get the audio. Open up your streaming software of choice and then you can mess around with that. This is what I decided to do. Isn't it cool? Bottom screen, oh, whoa. I set up my stream deck so I can just swap between the bottom screen and the top screen. It's actually really annoying that even after soldering all of those points, I still have to use a headphone jack to record the audio. Like, why? This is USB-C. My gripes aside, this is a solid mod at a reasonable price. If you're looking for a cheaper option to record your DS and GBA games on original hardware, this is the way. I mean, it's pretty much the only option out there, but at least it's a good one. And no, I won't be selling these. But if you want me to do a tutorial on the new 3DS Excel version, let me know in those comments down below. And while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. And I guess on that note, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later, guys.
proof that I'm playing on real hardware. Boom. Oh, wait. One player. I don't have any friends.